So let's look at this uh, comparison between uh, two high resolution methods, Capon versus uh, linear prediction. Uh, so if you recall, here the weight vector was R inverse A theta divided by A transpose R inverse A. And the corresponding output uh, spectrum, the spatial spectrum turned out to be 1 over A transpose R inverse A theta. Whereas in the linear prediction, we went through this, right? We're trying to predict uh, one of the elements in terms of the other. That way, capture the whole spectrum turned out to be 1 over a polynomial squared, where the polynomial is of this form. So to see which one is superior, which one has better resolution, I'm going to start with the 1 over PC omega. So and I'll connect it with uh, uh, this uh, PL. So if you look at correspondingly here, so let's make everything theta. So M is, the superscript is just to note that we are dealing with uh, M sensors. So this is 1 over R0, R1 up to Rm minus 1. Then R1 star R0. Okay, so that's the polynomial. If you want, you can explain. We went through all this, right? This was obtained by, yeah, square is, uh, uh, you need to square it, right? So that's going to be, so this square root goes away. And this gets squared, right? So let's look at this. So this is going to be Again, uh, remember here we have that uh, B uh, A inverse, so we can use this expansion, right? So the expansion of this, if you remember, is going to be determined of A multiplied by D minus C A inverse B. So we have C A inverse B here. C is a row vector. This is a row vector. And uh, because D minus, uh, because there is no D, there will be a minus sign here. So I'm going to put the minus here. And then I'm going to divide by A. So we'll use this identity so that, right? We had this before. So you have, this is your C, this is your A, this is your B. So this is going to be minus 1 over and remember, we are dealing with what? So here your R is actually Tm minus 1, right? Yes. R is the covariance matrix is uh, using R0, R1, R2, up to Rm minus 1. So that's uh, this one. So this is going to be delta M minus 1. Then here this is going to be So we need a little bit of uh, or zero. And C is what? C is uh, the steering vector, right? So this is E raised to one e to the power j omega 
etcetera e to the power j m minus 1 omega 0 here e 1 e raised to minus j omega etcetera e raised to minus j m minus 1 omega yes everybody is at least uh, right you see the size 1 to the m rows or m columns m plus 1 columns here 1 2 up to m m plus 1 so it's a square matrix okay so we took care of everything i don't need this right now i'm going to expand uh, uh, so look at this this mess needs to be connected with this mess that's what we are going to do huh it's not easy you can see it's everything is all over right and uh, so I'm going to use another matrix identity which I had told you last time. See, if I have a big matrix, it's a determinant. So determinant of, I'm going to put it this way, right? The determinant of this A can be written in terms of this determinant. Remember, determinant of A, B, C, D is A, D minus B, C. So it's a similar idea. This determinant multiplied by this determinant Uh, then, so this is the, so the, uh, the, uh, the first one is the northwest corner, right, multiplied by this one. When I say northwest corner, the way I have written, get rid of one more, the last row and last column, make its determinant, that's the northwest. Then this is, get rid of the first row and last column. That is going to be the southwest, right? Southeast, right? Minus, so that's like A multiplied by D, then minus BC. BC is the other way. So that's going to be this, this uh, so this is going to be the northeast multiplied by this piece, which this is going to be the southwest. Uh, divided by that's the only difference the a center the center piece without the first row last column first column last row so this is jacobi's identity i am going to use this to expand uh, this determinant and we can do it mentally you see uh, so the first piece is easy what is this piece anybody adult delta and minus one and that will cancel with this and then this piece. So I'm just going to write it that as it is. Right. So once you, if you know this mentally, I'm going to save the space here. And the whole thing is divided by what? By the center piece. What is the center piece? Remo remember, if I remove this one, this will start with R1, then R0. This will go up to Rm minus 2. Delta M minus 2. So that will be here, delta m minus 2. Then uh, del uh, this piece uh, cancels with this. Then you just need to, so I'm just going to write it down. And uh, that's going to be starting with R0, right? So that's R0, R1, et cetera, Rm minus 2. Then e raised to minus j omega, e raised to minus 2 j omega, etc. See, from a column, I can pull out a constant, right? So if I pull out e raised to minus j omega here, this will read now like this. And that 0 will remain the same. And the last row is going to be, uh, this is Rm minus 1, so this will start with uh, Rm minus 2, star, etc., up to R0. And I did, I, this will start with e raised to j omega, but I will pull out an e raised to j omega. I hope you see what I have done. See, I, uh, from this column, I, if I pull out e raised to j omega, and from, the, from this row, and from this column, I pull out e raised to minus j omega. This constant and this constant will cancel. So you see, I got back, this is only the one term. From this, I have to subtract. So there is a minus here. Because of the minus, that will become plus. So 
So there is already a, uh, remember, uh, the 1 over delta m minus 1 is coming up, right, from the previous one, m minus 2. There was m minus 1 there, then there will be an m minus 2, right? And then what? So uh, the other two pieces, so what are the other? So this piece is, uh, other two pieces are fortunately complex conjugate of each other. Look at here. This piece and uh, this piece. So you just need to write any one piece and its absolute value squared. So I'm going to use this piece because I just want to make, so that's going to be R1, R0. Look at here, uh, this piece multiplied by this and you can see uh, it, it can actually be shown to be complex conjugate if you write it down. So let me write down one piece which is south west. So I'm just copying the, the, you remove the first column and the last column. So that's going to be R1 star R0, etc., up to Rm minus 2. And here you have Rm minus 2 star, etc., up to R0. And you have 1 e raised to j omega up to e to the power j m minus 1 omega. Okay, now look at a couple of observations. You can see this is exactly the same as we started with, except uh, m reduced by, look at here, where you have m minus 1, here you have m minus 2. Delta m minus 1, delta m minus 2. So the first term is actually 1 over PC of uh, m minus 1. And here you can see, see this? This is here at the output. And if you look at here, uh, yeah, you, uh, I'm going to sh show you very quickly that this determinant is exactly the same as this because look at here. What I'm going to do is, uh, see this got flipped. And uh, this, all these rows are flipped. So all I have to do is, uh, I'm going to, Remember, in a determinant, if you flip it two columns, what happens? Minus one. So I, I flip this all the way, and I flip the, uh, all the columns, I flip it back so that I get the, this arrangement. So this has to go through this and sit here. The next one has to go through M minus, the first one has to go through M flips, the last column. The, next, the one before that has to go through M minus one, etc. And, uh, and then you do the same thing on the rows. Uh, leaving the last row here, see this row, yeah, so when you do this flipping, this R0, R1, et cetera, is going to sit from here, right? See, after the column flipping is done, R0 will come and sit here. R1 will come and sit here. Then you do the row flipping, you will get this arrangement by, so a determinant, and it's all minus one to the power. So you're doing a same number of row flips, same number of column flips, so that minus one to the power will turn out to be one. So the bottom line is what you see here is uh, one over PL of uh, M theta. So this is the big relation I want to prove, right? So what we have is, uh, so 
So if that is the case, you can rewrite this as 1 over PC uh, M minus 2 theta uh, plus 1 over PL M minus uh, 1 theta, right? So you can see if you go through this, you can rewrite this whole thing as uh, I mean, through M, not M minus one. Through M. So, anybody? Uh, so, I have, uh, so what is it showing? PCM depends on uh, uh, the linear prediction for order one. PCM depends on all this. Look at here. PCM depends on PL, but from all the first order, sloppy linear prediction compared to the final linear prediction. So if you just compare this and this, which one will have better resolution? I hope you can see this diagram. This will be uh, in a diagram as this has to stand out, just this, right? Because this one is in the, if you think, if you say that the earlier linear predictions are sloppier because you are only using few outputs, and you are using the sort of a well, what is the harmonic mean of all this to compute the last one? So most likely the, the this will be the PL of M with the high resolution. Uh, that uh, it's a this may be PL of M minus one, etc. But the average of all this inverses of the average and then inverting is going to give you PC. So that may be something like this. Again, an indirect argument. But this is an interesting relation. The Capone estimator and the high resolution Capone estimator depends on low resolution. This is a fact, right? I just proved it. Low resolution uh, linear prediction estimators. And consequently, which one is a better estimator? Linear predictor or I mean, which one has higher resolution? Remember, we have to compare Apple and Apple. With the M sensors, if you do the Capone, and with the M sensors, if you do the linear prediction, definitely, uh, because this is avoiding all the earlier ones, whereas this has got all the earlier ones. So, this has a better chance of having superior resolution. And this relation is due to Berg, and I think it goes to 1980s or something, or 78 or something, around this time. Uh, the superior, so linear prediction is superior to a common estimator. What I am going to show next is the high resolution estimators based on the eigen methods are even better than all this. You can theoretically get uh, infinite. Uh, Signals could be infinitesimally closer and still you can uh, separate them. You can wrap up and go. I think this is, I, I'll just, whatever I do, you don't need to do the video. Oh, hold on.